Hello viewers, Mo here. It's the month of spookiness and here I have this box which houses the spirit of Ethel Fletcher. Ethel dear, are you with us now? Please ring the bell to let us know. Ah yes, she's with us. I feel Ethel's spiritual energy. Check on my fingertips. <laughs> now Ethel, are you happy? Ethel, are you going to kill me? No, that box isn't really cursed, but actually has an Adreno-based Wiimos and a magnet hidden inside it, and that I use my phone to trigger the magnet to ring the bell. I was having a chat with Deep, and he brought a video of a magic trick that he's seen and liked to my attention. A magician was on stage with a bell hanging above a box, and the magician was contacting the dead. The magician asks questions, the bell rings, depending on what the answer the magician wants, I'm on to you, magic man. Well, Deep asked me how he do that, how he magic man. And the first thought that occurred to me was magnets. The magician must have used a powerful magnet and that someone in the audience is following a script and triggering it when required. Well, Deep wanted to learn this trick, so he politely asked me to go ahead and try to replicate it and teach him the ways of the magic man. Now Deep, Deep Aria is the owner of HorrorIsWeird.com and he is an author who draws inspiration from a wide range of authors and directors known for their unique settings and characters and his stories blends atmospheric horror, science fiction and weird fiction and mystery all together. So if it piques your interest, his books are available through Amazon and so forth. I believe they are free on Kindle for this month as an electronic book so check it out, leave 5 stars or what have you. Essentially how it works is that there's an electromagnet glued to the underside of the top lid and that I'm using a ESP8266 module, the Wii MOS D1 Mini. It has been programmed via Adreno to control that magnet. The Wii MOS hosts a web server that allows me to access a website to turn on and off the magnet, which I could thanks to this MOS When here. I turn on the magnet, it pulses for one second on, half a second off, allowing it to attract the bell causing it to move and do the ding ding. I also used some paddle pop sticks and fabric to create a false bottoms in order to conceal the equipment. So if anyone does try to look inside, all they will see is just nothing. Deception. So essentially you will have the magic man near the box asking questions and then you have one other person who may be on their phone or whatever controlling the bell following the script. Keep watching if you want to see my full journey. Now you don't really need a lot of supplies to complete this project. I kept in mind to be as cost effective as possible in order to ensure maximum profits. I am not getting paid for this anyway, so... I was provided with the box by Deep. He had this box for many years and it's not haunted as far as we know. You could probably find it at any $2 store. I purchased this off eBay for about 8 bucks. It's a nice ESP8266 microcontroller that I had used before. I chose it because it was cheap, easy to program, you know, Adreno mind you. It's small and it has Wi-Fi. I did not use a Raspberry Pi because for this project I believe it was way overkill. I was provided with the 5 volt electro magnet created by DF Robot but it was sold by Core Electronics. This is the MVP of our project. This guy will cause the bell to ring. D provided me with this magnet. Obviously the more powerful the magnet the greater the effect but sometimes it may not work out to your benefit. The bell was provided by Deep, normal metal bell, kind of crap quality, but it has a nice lightweight feel to it. I made this frame out of a wire coat hanger, so it's not that fancy. Now in order to be able to power the magnet and the Wemos, I purchased a polymer lithium iron battery at 3.7 volts, 2400 milliamps per hour for about 22 bucks, again from Core Electronics. This will provide enough power for about an hour more or less which is fine since the trick would last for the maximum of 10 minutes. I did think about using a 5 volt wall power adapter to power it, you know power the Wemos and the magnet but it would ruin the illusion of a wire coming out of the box. <laughs> now straight from eBay, $13 for 5 I purchased a TP4056 LiPo battery charging board. 
This will allow me to charge the battery and power the Wiimote and the electromagnet safely. It outputs at 5 volts at 2 amps, which easily meets the requirements of both the electromagnet and the Wiimos. I found this USB micro breaker board, you know, underneath my toaster, so I soldered it to the charging points of the charging board, just to make it easier for me to, you know, charge the battery. I paid $2.85 for this, and it allows the Wiimos to turn the magnet on and off safely. It works great, especially after I implemented the 1N4001 diode. For testing, I left the headers on, but for the actual implementation, I completely removed them to increase the storage space. Without this diode, I would have popped my MOSFET power switch module easy. It was thanks to a Reddit post I made on Us Electronics and also this article by Core Electronics that suggested to use a diode, this exact diode to prevent feedback, reverse polarity and kickback. During testing, I was unable to properly turn on and off the magnet with just a MOSFET power switch module. And it turned out what was happening was without the diode, the current was discharging back through the circuitry, causing the MOSFET power switch to get extremely hot, way too hot to touch. A normal switch to turn on and off the device, I forgot to order one, so I took apart this vintage Beyblade RC launcher for one. Wiring and heat shrink tubing to make connections that keep it nice and tidy and safe. I used powder pop sticks to create a false bottom and top for the box in order to hide the magnet and the rest of the electronics. I then used the fabric to hide the powder pop sticks and to give it more of a flush look so people don't immediately see there's electronics or suspect that there's something wrong with the box. Then just bog standard tools such as soldering iron, solder, scissors, wood glue, fabric glue, sandpaper. That's it for parts and supplies. Let's move on to the coding. The code can be found on my GitHub, that's Omo. Links will be found down below in the comment section or in the description box. It's a beautiful and simple code. Essentially got the basis of the code of embeddedrobotics.com. However, I had to modify in a way for it to work for this project. The code basically creates an access point and hosts a web server under the Wi-Fi name TrudyNet7315 and as a basic password. I chose a non-suspicious name so it doesn't get anyone's attention. When you connect to the access point, head over to 192.168.4.1. This web page will appear. Now, if you activate it, it will turn on the magnet for one second, but turns off for half a second and it repeats on loop until you turn it off. These values can be adjusted for your own project. This section of the code is just about changing the background and font colors. And if you're wondering why I chose such dark colors, if someone glances at my phone or screen, they would be able to see what I'm doing. For example, if Deep is performing with the box and I'm the one who is triggering the bell, I will have the camera app open focused on the performer deep while having a smaller window open for the web browser ready to trigger the box like this. So most people would assume I'm just recording deep's magic trick. Now this is the wiring diagram pause if you want to look at it, but it's also available on my GitHub. That's Omo, so. During testing, I had glued the magnet to the underside of the top lid to ensure the magnet was strong enough to attract the bell through the wood. I began by developing the fake bottom and top covering to ensure that if the box is ever opened by the performer, no one will see the box being rigged. Afterwards, I ensure that they, the coverings and the fake bottom and so forth, I ensure that they had a nice tight fit in the box and I began installing the electronics onto the fake bottom. I first laid out each component on the false bottom and measured and cut the wiring out. I did desolder the headers from the MOSFET power controller to slimify it and use heat shrink tubing to protect certain points whenever possible. After soldering, I hot glued everything except the battery in place. I used double sided tape for the battery. I then did a test fit and everything worked perfectly. Now we're going to spray on the fabric because I want to further hide the fake top and bottom and the magnets wiring as well. So the fabric has to be one piece essentially. I will be using this fabric glue spray and I read that it's half when may cause cancer so I put on some gloves and a mask to reduce the amount of exposure as possible. I did the top section first and it looks absolutely amazing. Yes, I went with some pink fabric because that's what was given to me by Dee. Felt or suede 
in red or black would have been great but hey i'm working with what i got now for the fake bottom section the actual false bottom i cut out a separate piece and i glued it on top of it and then with the piece from the top i trimmed it so it would fit in the box and i used this tool to push the fabric into the gaps between the false bottom and the side of the box. And now I'm done. It looks great, I'm pleased with it. This is the first time I actually worked with the fabric in the first place, and you can't really see any wiring or cable from or to the magnet and the Wemos. Box looks like it's straight from some bazaar. Now the bell stand was just made out of a wire coat hanger and folded in a way that the bell would hang above the box but only by a few millimeters. Enough for the magnet to attract said bell but also not have any part of the bell scrape along the box. I then just painted the um, bell stand in black you know so it looks cool. Here is a quick demo, combining this yeah. box and bell with a backstory that adds in a mystery and atmosphere to build the character of this box. An actual story that one may believe. For example, I purchased this box and bell from an estate sale. This box was owned by Ethel, who used to keep stuff in here. And the bell was used for assistance every time she needed it. But she took her own life, probably due to not wanting to live past her prime and alone. But others say she was murdered as she was planning on attending her grandnephew's wedding and was excited for it. Something along the lines of that kind of builds much more of a, you know, like a character for the box and much more of a story that like there's more of an essence to the box. The box. Now the pros for this project. This method is cost effective, easy to do, battery powered so I could do the magic trick anywhere. Simple. I originally planned to use receivers, garage remotes, etc. But I went against the idea because of the obvious reason. The range is fantastic. I can be in a different room and trigger it. Quiet in the sense of that you can't hear the electronics, the magnet and so forth. All you really hear is just the bell. Now compared to what I've seen in the Magic Man's video, mine has a much more of a gentle dingle to it. However, for me, it's a lot more realistic. Now hear me out. I'm a huge fan of those ghost hunting shows. I think they are fun, but every time they do try to collect evidence, they utilize some tool, for example, a ball, and see if some ghost is around and then freak out when the ball rolls five centimeters. So the I gentle guess, ding of yeah. the bell kind of just goes along with what I've seen in those shows and thus the ghost lore. Ooh, spooky. Now for the cons. Well, every time I want to do the trick, I have to take out the false bottom, switch it on, put it back in, and then retuck the fabric in order to cover up the false bottom. And you know, after a while, I kind of see how that might get annoying. But then again, some people might, not, well, Deep in particular would not be doing this magic trick every single day. And most likely it's going to be a one-off experience. Another con is that the bell and stand has to be sitting on the box just right for it to work. So a practice is a must. It's not really a hassle, but still I'll mark it down as a con. Another con is that the bell and stand don't even fit in the box anymore due to the false top and bottom. I should have sanded them down before I applied the fabric. That's all the cons I can think of right now. Even after utilizing the box multiple times just for testing and seeing if there's any improvements, I'm practically done. In conclusion, I achieved my objective, it works well, it looks great, it functions great, maybe a more powerful electromagnet or a way to attract and repel the bell, but either way it works just fine. And the way it's set up, it's easy for anyone to either assemble or also to actually control the box. It's just an easy interface, there's no like trying to like zap wires together in order to get the magnet going. I had fun working on this project, especially since I'm actually filming, editing and uploading it onto YouTube. Trying to determine how one would go about recreating that magic spooky trick was really interesting. It kind of fascinated me of how things may work, like in a way to create an illusion or to deceive someone with just a box. Uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, I got more videos coming up, check out my other videos. For instance, uh, I turned a collectible broom from Harry Potter into a controller for Hogwarts Legacy, so you could fly the broom in-game with the collectible broom. Also, check out my Instagram, my Reddit, my Twitter, and my other socials. Happy Halloween. Farewell, my little spooky butts.